Welcome to the Mother Together podcast. This is Tiana. This is Arielle. And we're two moms empowering other mamas not to settle in their motherhood, relationships, careers, and self-worth. Hey, mamas. Welcome back. And we are excited to talk today about LifeWise, support systems, friends in general. Yeah, so... Let's first talk about like what us as like women we're looking for in friends. I know I look for someone who's like trusting, reliable, loyal, and then someone who's like able to give me feedback in a non like judgmental way because we all need feedback. Not we're not right all the time. All the decisions we make are not the right one. So I want someone in my life who's gonna like help me be like, Tiana, is that a good idea? And like really be able to like talk me through that, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever decision I'm trying to make or whatever I'm doing. And like, I wouldn't say like, I guess it would be a positive way, Mm -hmm. but I mean, it would still positive criticism. Yeah. Like it may be not what I want to hear, but it's like what I need to hear. And it's not in a judgmental way. I think that makes sense. I think too, like while I'm thinking about this, another part of that would be like understanding the way that you like need communication Mm -hmm. and even need like love well that kind of brings me love languages Mm -hmm. that's something we we talk about all the time yeah but we did that just like in friendships but we also Mm -hmm. did that in like love languages for our business roles right so and there's actually quizzes out there I mean if you go to the love language website Mm -hmm. you can take a a quiz for each type of like relationship that you're looking to find your love language yeah I think that's really important and to even talk about with your friends Mm -hmm. like we talk about our personality types all the time time. and it's not like you're putting each other in a box or something but it's just you're trying to understand how you can serve each other Mm -hmm. better I think it's like being a being aware because Mm -hmm. like you want to be aware of like triggers of like the other person Mm -hmm. being aware of like what the other person feels like and like I can tell just by mannerisms like like if Ariel's having an off day Mm -hmm. like I can tell and like and I can tell like I'm very I think I am at least like Mm -hmm. when someone needs space, I will give them the space. Like I can just tell like, okay, like I'm not one of those friends who are going to come over and just like stay forever. Like I'm like, okay, like (laughs) now it's my time to leave. Yeah. And you know, I don't feel any like, you know, any type of way about that Mm -hmm. because it's just like understanding your friend. I know, you know, just like I've had some friends who will just like keep pushing and keep pushing. And I'm like, I'm the type of girl who I need my space sometimes. Mm -hmm. And this one friend in particular, I was so exhausted and I wanted to cry, but like you oh don't want to be rude because it's your friend. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm just like, I need my space. Like how else can I say it? But that right there was just the, the lack of like not understanding your friends. So I think that's a huge thing. And like when you're looking for friends as someone who can understand you, mm-hmm. your personality, your love languages, like filling that person's cup up because everyone always talks about it in like a spouse situation, but it's also in friends and also Mm -hmm. like, I mean, even with our own kids, like they have love languages that we need to fulfill. And having that conversation too, because I mean, this is relevant with spouse, with a spouse as well. But having that conversation, because if you have a friend who's like, I need space pretty quickly, you know, if you take that space and then they're like, well, what, like, why do you need space for me? Do you not like me anymore? (laughs) Like I, I'm kind of like that. So like, yeah. So like, I, but I know that like you need space. So it, I have to just remind myself, it's not me. It's just like our personality is like how we function. So just understanding and, and separating that. And that's why you have to talk about it instead of just speculate. Like yeah. has this person that I've been friends with for so many years actually my friend? Like that's silly. Well, and too, that's, I feel like with anything, but we start getting in our heads. Yeah. Like you're probably used to it already because your husband has the same like yeah. personality type in like love languages yeah. as as me, so she's probably a little more familiar with, like, what's going on. Mm-hmm. But that's a good point. If you know it's your friend doing that, then you may get in your head and be like, oh, she doesn't like me anymore. Like, yeah. she has another friend. And, like, no, she's probably at home sitting in the bathtub and yeah. on hot water on TikTok. Yeah. Like, that's all she's doing. Doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next point we could talk about is, like, evaluating your current friend group that you have right now. Okay. So this is a hard one, I feel like, because a lot of people don't even really – think about having to do this so this one is a tough one so I have definitely have outgrown friends before Mm -hmm. I I feel like we all have like every yeah I feel like we all have if you're an adult you've definitely I hope you've outgrown friends because that's just self-growth and nothing wrong with those people and nothing wrong with you but I mean there was a point in my life where it was like once I got saved and I too I got married really early 
and I had a baby really early. So like already right mm-hmm. there, like that put me in a whole different. That's what I was going to say. Life experience yes. will kind of filter out. It's And it's not filter out. Like it's not like they're bad friends because you aren't. Actually. It's just like seasons, you know. Yes, seasons. That's a good way to put that. I was in a different season of life than them. And they were all still in, I mean, they were, I mean, we were fresh in the college. So they mm-hmm. were all in college. I was a mother. That's I was a totally a wife. different life, and like, so, experience. Totally different. And so I felt like I had to, I just grow, we just grown apart a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, we still stay in touch now. And I, I mean, I love that. But it did take some years to like, you know, get there because mm-hmm. now they're caught up to the same life, yeah. you know, season that I'm in. But I mean, it was like a really sad time for me, but it was also a time that I just had to grow up for just my family and myself and like for my values and my goals in life at the time. It's funny because I have not been one to have like a lot of friends at once. So I've experienced this for sure, but there's been like gaps in my life where it's like I never really had like really close friends, but I've watched my husband have, and men, this is so different for men. So if you're like me and you compare your relationships to your husband's relationships, like obviously friendships, you don't let that make you feel like there's something wrong with you because my husband, just everything's different, but his friends, like he, he had the same friend group from like kindergarten to not, I mean, maybe like three, four years ago is when he started like really outgrowing that friend group. So I would always like look at that and think, well, there's something wrong with me because he's got all these friends that he's had since kindergarten and I don't really have any like close friends that I can say that I've had mm-hmm. forever. I have a like I have a couple that I'm still like really like really good friends to like with. I have one and like in mind that I know if I ever need anything, she, she's always there. But, like our work schedules have us on like totally different, you know, lives like paths right now. And so that's hard too, to, where it's like you have those friends mm-hmm. where you always know that if you reach out, mm-hmm. you'll be there. But it's like the day to day conversation's not there. Yeah, no, and that still can feel isolating sometimes. It, yeah, it does, if especially too because I'm a very. I mean, yes, my love language is physical touch, but like next would be like quality time. Like mm-hmm. I like to spend time with each other, but then again, I like my space. So like we spend a lot of time with you. But I'm very, like, I guess that's probably my personality type Mm -hmm. where I'm, like, super social and I'm a very, like, big extrovert. So I like to be talking Mm 24-7. And and I understand, like, some of my friends aren't like that. They're like, shut up, Tiana. Like, (laughs) let's watch the movie. And I'm like, I don't want to watch a movie. Let's just talk. (laughs) And so – but, again, that's just understanding your friend. And, like, I understand this, like, friend in particular. I know what she does and doesn't like. And so, you know, it's nice to be able to be an adult and accept that. I know Mm -hmm. there was a Facebook post that was going around forever – Basically, like, just because, like, I don't get to um, talk to you every day Mm -hmm. and spend a lot of time with you, just know I'm still your best friend. Mm -hmm. I'm just busy with motherhood and being a wife and working. And and that's so true because once you get married, I mean, it's a whole different ballgame. Oh, yeah. Your your number one relationship is obviously your relationship Mm -hmm. with God and then your husband. Yes. And then your children. And then your children. Yeah. And so it's really hard. And I think that's where, like, it's still really important. It should be a priority to make it a priority for yes. your other friendships. Yeah. But that is, like, the one that always mm-hmm. gets thrown to the wayside while you're mm-hmm. focusing on everything else. I mean, ours, like, yes, we're, we're business partners and then we're friends. But our kids are also in the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, like, Mondays and Tuesdays, our girls have dance practice. Mm-hmm. And then it's, like, Saturdays, our boys have baseball. And then mm-hmm. they have games. So it's, like, we naturally get to spend a lot more time together than I would with, like, my other friends who maybe don't have children yet or they have children but they go to another school so and that's what you'll find is like we can get into that later of like where you're going to find your other friends so um let's talk about like a looking in the mirror so we all say like oh I want a friend who lifts me up or Mm -hmm. who motivates me but look in the mirror like are are you lifting other people Mm, up are you motivating people Because if you're not, why do you think that you're going to attract those people? So same kind of thing. Like, be that person. Be that that friend that Mm -hmm. you want. Because if you're being that friend and you are modeling that person that you want in your life, Mm -hmm. you're going to attract those same people. And you don't need to find someone else to, like, make those things happen for yourself. No. You can work on yourself and then your friends will start to come. Well, same thing. Like, if you're, like, nagging and, like, Mm -hmm. negative all the time – you're going to attract people that are like nagging and negative Mm -hmm. or like if you're super motivated and like striving for success, you're going to attract the same people because they're going to be like, I want to be around her. Like she's motivating me. She's pushing me to that next level. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to push, if you are nagging and negative or something like that, you're going to push people out of your life Mm -hmm. that do realize, okay, I need to surround myself by more motivating people or more positive people. So just being aware of the things that you are putting out there 
So it kind of goes along with like being aware of, you know, the type of friend that you need, like being aware of who you are and what you bring to the table and maybe like what you're putting out there, like, like think of it as a dating profile. Like, yeah, are you holding, say that. <laughs> are you holding up a fish in your dating profile? Then maybe that's why you're not attracting the right people, you know, like you <laughs> yes. might not be putting out the right things. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. So let's talk about like the different types of friends we have. Yeah. I was going to mention that earlier because mm-hmm. you were saying like, so kind of went into it. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I feel like there are those friends that you, you know, you, you know, you can rely on for certain things mm-hmm. or, you, you know, you want to do certain things with. And then like we talked about this earlier. Yeah. Like I feel like I could do anything mm-hmm. with you, but there's not yes. all things that I would just like enjoy doing. Like we went to Nashville this weekend. And that was so, I mean, so fun. But we, we did a lot of relaxing mm-hmm. and Tiana's very much like, oh, let's go out too. Like, let's go. Let's dance. Let's have like, nightlife. And I yeah. was like. Um, like, can we just do like a nine to ten p.m. nightlife and then go to bed We're just early? Getting started, yeah. And so that, and obviously, like, we went into it knowing each other's, you know, we preferences. That, yeah. But it's not like she just doesn't enjoy that part of her life because I don't. She has friends that yeah. also enjoy going out and like that. Part and that of puts it. like that's a good example right there of being in a different season. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Ariel's married. I am divorced. So mm-hmm. like. I do enjoy, like, the social life of, like, Mm -hmm. I'm not going out, like, finding men at all. Right. But, like, going out and just, like, socializing and meeting new people. So, like, that's a perfect example. Like, I have my friends that I I go out with Mm -hmm. that are in the same season. Maybe they've never been married or, you know, they're single. They're in the same season as me. Mm -hmm. Because, like, too, you don't want to bring your divorced friends down with you and be like, you need – are your married friends with you. Like, okay, you need to go out with me. Like, that's Mm -hmm. wrong. You know, you have to respect your friends and, like – you know, their marriage. And so I know that and I'm aware. So like, I'm not going to text my married friends and be like, hey, Mm -hmm. let's go out this weekend. I mean, you never go out with me. Yeah. I may like ask like, hey, do you and your husband want to come out? Or like, you know, you guys should come out this weekend. Mm -hmm. I may say that, but like, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't depend on her to be like my girl who goes out with me when I have, you know, kid free night. Like I'm going to have another friend group who's in the same season as me. Right. And I know, like, too, there are some things that in my life when I've had, like, several friends, like I said, that's been rare. Like, usually I'll have, like, oh my, my circle's really small. But there are things that, like, if I need to talk to somebody, I know, okay, I'm going to go to this person because they're really good at, like, speaking to this part of my life. Mm-hmm. And you have to still be, like, really self-aware of why you're going to that person. Like, am I going to them because I want to complain about my husband? I know that they'll let me and, yeah. like, complain with me. Or am I going to them because I know that they'll be able to, like, what you said earlier, like, be able to point out, hey, I know this sucks, but let's think about some ways that you could be causing the situation or whatever. Like, being able to be helpful and not just, like, keep the whole situation negative. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, like, where do you find those friends? Because as adults, like, we're not walking no. through the hallways, at, you know, in high school. Yeah. And you're like, hey, like, so-and-so is in my biology class. Right. Or going to, like, classrooms where you're yeah. literally made to interact with the same people your yes, age. Yes, like, you're forced. Yeah. Okay, exactly. So, and two, as moms, if you're working a nine-to-five, you're literally probably going to your nine-to-five. Yeah. You're coming home. You're cooking. You're cleaning. Maybe you're running your kids to practices. And you're like, okay, where do these people have time to find friends? Yeah. Well, first of all, Tiana and I met at a church, church workout. workout. Mm-hmm. So if you ha- if you go to church or if that's something that would interest you, finding like some local churches, you don't have to go to just one. No. Like if you have a church, but you know that there's another church like in your city that has a lot of like social events, go mm-hmm. to them. So take advantage of things like that. And that's a part of looking in the mirror too. If you're like, well, I don't want to have to get out and make friends. Okay, well. That's just unrealistic. No. You know, you're not going to be able to make friends. We don't have, like, people sitting at their computers on AOL <laughs> anymore. Like, we're not doing that. So you have to get out there and socialize. And a church workout, some, stuff like that's really easy because it's not like you go specifically to mm-hmm. socialize. You can go and, like, if you're like, oh, wait, I don't think I actually want to do it today, mm-hmm. just work out. And then, you know, once you see some familiar faces, it'll just organically happen. So, and two, for example, when you get there – you may have to introduce yourself mm-hmm. because, like, Ariel, she was, like, there. I remember with, like, Lorelai. She had, like, this beautiful mm-hmm. hair, and I, like, walked up to her. And me being my extrovert self, I'm, like, you know, in her face. Like, what's your name? What do you do? <laughs> How old is she? Like, asking all these questions. Mm-hmm. And, like, from there, I mean, I, I got her number right there. Yeah. We texted that night. And then, I mean, we had – that's when our friendship began. Yeah. And I'm not the type of person to do that. Like, <laughs> I remember thinking from afar, like, oh, my gosh, this girl is so gorgeous. Like, how did she just have a baby and all those things? 
And like, if you're like me, you know, just be open to someone walking up to you and talking to you and stick around. Like, even if you feel awkward, that's what, that's the thing I always do is I always feel like I have to get out, like Mm -hmm. as soon as things are over, but like stick around, like Mm -hmm. let God, like naturally, like divinely let you meet people. That's really good. Cause that's, I always like look at my point where I'm going to go right up to somebody and talk to them. Mm -hmm. So that's a really good. see someone new and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have several friendships that are just from, actually, all my all my new friends are from that. <laughs> now that I think about it, like, I've literally just, like, walked up to that person yeah. and started talking to them. That's so healthy, though, that you're able to do that. It is, but then it's like, did I force myself? No. <laughs> I don't think you still be friends with them. No. So, I mean, that's a good, a good point because not mm-hmm. everyone's an extrovert, so that's a good – Yeah. That's good. Okay, so, like, the church groups, mm-hmm. like, there's lots of mom groups, and I know mom groups just have bad, you know – like just like like are you, with like them. are you talking about like Facebook mom groups? No, or like in general, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we can actually go in and like I know there's one and like the city that's closest to us. Oh, like mom, like things like yeah, that. They yeah, have like brunches and they mm-hmm. do different like events. Like you could do things like that or like us. We did a church workout or we went to a church workout. Yep. Um, even like sporting events, like. I yeah. mean, if your kids are in sports or your kids are in dance or whatever they're in, like start like, talking to the moms. And help out, like help out in the dugout. Put yourself, mm-hmm. like if you're like me, where it's like you won't naturally walk up to, to somebody, put yourself in situations where you have to interact mm-hmm. with the parents. Like join PTO, like you'll have to interact with, with volunteers, mm-hmm. but just put yourself in situations where you have to meet other people. Yeah. And then also like while you're doing this, if you if you are a believer, like Pray that God will bring those conversations up and make it feel natural. And and if you are awkward, if you're an introverted like me, give you the words to be able to feel confident Mm -hmm. and, you know, able to have those conversations, but also just to bring those people into your life. Mm -hmm. So right now, this is all a little hard because of the pandemic and everything that's going on. I know in some areas right now, specifically, it's lightened up a lot. And then some areas are actually like closing back up again. So you could be listening to this and like, well, thanks, Ariel and Tiana. Like, (laughs) I can't do any of those things right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we said like mom groups, those have kind of a bad rap. Um, there's lots of mom groups. So we have actually one called mm-hmm. mother together. Yes. Um, if you want to join that, we're, we're both very active in there. Mm-hmm. We and lots. we monitor it really well. Yes. Like we have had reports in the past of like people, um, trying to like screenshot things and send it. And we've tried to like squash that as soon as possible. So we try to monitor it really well. Um, so that you're not getting in there and feeling that toxic mom culture. Yeah. So, yeah, checking out, like, Mother Together or any, like, local mom groups that you have. Or if you have any sort of hobby Mm -hmm. or talent or, like, any sort of dream that you have that you want to pursue, finding a Facebook group that supports that. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of the ladies in our coaching program where we coach women how to become virtual assistants, they are from all different states. Yes. And some of them are from, like, the same state and maybe they knew of each other before or whatever, but... They've Not gotten closer, out. yeah, because of this situation. So, and I know you guys are probably thinking, like, okay, Tiana, like, we we actually want people like that you have where you're sitting at the park together, and mm-hmm. you guys can go out to eat together and do all these things together. But this is a way that can actually boost your confidence in order to get yourself out to do this. Mm-hmm. I have met so many people from like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook that like they'll comment on my stuff, like cheering me on and hyping me up. I'll comment on their stuff, cheering mm-hmm. them on and hyping them up. And then we end up having like really like intimate conversations in my direct messages, which is so neat because I'm like, wow, like this girl is from like, you know, States away, yeah. and here we are, like being each other's like biggest fans. That's really okay. That's a really good point because for me, I just don't like to engage sometimes. Yeah, that's a good way. And it. so I'll even be on Facebook, and I have to remind myself, like I'll see a post that someone posts, and I'm like, oh, I love that. That's mm-hmm. so cool. They posted that, and then I'll start scrolling again, and then this like voice time is like, Ariel, then comment, like mm-hmm. let them know. That's mm-hmm. what this whole thing is for. So just. Like, motivating yourself to actually engage on Facebook. And you'll be so surprised by how interactive people actually want to be. And being able – like, that's a really good point. That will get you used to, like, interacting with people in a very easy way. Yeah. Yeah. I have a rule. Every single day I have to comment on five people's picture or video. And that doesn't include all my likes. So I'll do lots of likes throughout (laughs) the day. But, like, I have to, like, put a comment Mm -hmm. on five people's – um, post because to me I'm just like that's just giving that's ad- adding like positivity mm-hmm. to someone else's life 
let's all be like honest. Like we all like a comment, you know, we shouldn't live for that validation, but it feels nice, you know, when we get it. So it's like important for me to leak at least five, five people a day. Yeah, Just like a little bit. Just and then and that goes back to what we were saying earlier. Mm-hmm. If you want people to speak life into yes. your life, then you need to be out there doing it too. So I would add to like when you're looking for friends, like don't look for a friend that you can just like laugh and have fun mm-hmm. with. You like you want someone who you can share like your your sadness, your, and your life with. <laughs> yeah, your sadness and your pain yeah. because like life isn't just like all fun and like woo, like mm-hmm. this is amazing. Like like Ariel, she's like great. Like we have fun together. We mm-hmm. laugh. We cry laugh. Sometimes we've done it in the same. So, yes. Yeah, sometimes we actually cry cry. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing to have a friend with. To go through all those things together and then also see each other grow, Mm -hmm. like, in life. I'm going to cry now. Yeah. (laughs) It it is very similar to having, you know, a partner in life Mm -hmm. because you are experiencing all those things and growing together. And so that's probably a really good way to measure the people around you. Like, Mm -hmm. are you growing together? Mm -hmm. Like, is that person still where you guys were 10 years ago? Or Mm -hmm. are you guys both striving for the same thing? There's a difference between, like, being friends with someone who is, you know, where they were 10 years ago, but trying to be where they want to be and someone who is where they were 10 years ago because they want to stay there. Mm -hmm. That person might be holding you back. But if you're both striving for something, that's where you can measure like, okay, there's growth here. We are like speaking life into each other's life. Have patience in this whole process. You know, you're not going to just like go to a church workout and meet someone and then... Same thing like a husband. Like, you know, I'm not going to go find a husband tomorrow. Right. Right. Like, it's going to take time and lots mm-hmm. of career. That, lots that of work friendship within has yourself. to grow. Yeah. Because even us, like, we met five years ago at that mm-hmm. church workout, but we really haven't been this close since, like, a mm-hmm. year ago whenever we opened up in a way that, like, we yeah. never opened up before, not even just with Laptop and Littles. And I'd say, like, it took us a while to really, mm-hmm. like, open up mm-hmm. and share. Well, I think it took a just in general with me to open up like mm-hmm. just with myself like with yeah. things and so like it was awesome to have someone to go through that journey mm-hmm. of like my inner self-growth that I had never you know I'd never been there before and, yeah like, it was uncomfortable like, yeah but it was I mean it was new so it yeah was, it was good and that that's another like good example of like seasons of life it's like mm-hmm. we we met five years ago but mm-hmm. we haven't always been like extremely close for the past five Mm -hmm. years like we were in phases like seasons of life like we'd be like you know pretty close we'd hang Mm -hmm. out but like things would get busy or we've had three babies in between us since we first met and that I mean that throws your whole life out of whack so being patient with that whole process is really important like you're not gonna find your life wife tomorrow yeah I'm not gonna find my husband tomorrow guys you're not gonna find your life wife tomorrow take time Mm -hmm. pray and then also be doing like your your Mm self-growth because you want to be ready for when your your life wife and your like your best friend comes along to yeah. spend that with you. And like we always say, journal about who you think would be your life wife. What would she look like so that you can go out and look for those qualities? And not like what would she look like? What is she going to have brown hair and brown yeah. eyes? Like she could have <laughs> blue eyes and blonde hair. Like what is she going to look like? What yeah. kind of personality do you want to attract? Like, to Mm -hmm. to be your life wife like what what are the things that you guys are going to be able to go do like are you guys going to build businesses together Mm -hmm. are you guys going to spend the days at the pool days at the park are you guys all the above or all of the above Mm -hmm. really get in detail like what you guys are going to do together yeah think of it as a wish list for god and then start praying Mm -hmm. over that thank you for tuning in and listening to the mother together podcast if you want to hang out with us in real life join our facebook group mother together go to facebook search mother together in groups click join and make sure to answer those questions See you in the group. group.